the human brain is a wondrously complex organ capable of the most remarkable feats, including the creation of art, music and advanced technology. The capacity of the human brain for extremely high levels of cognitive or information processing is a defining feature of our species. During the time the human ancestors have been evolving, starting from around 8 to 6 million years ago, the human brain has almost tripled in size, which allowed for the development of speech and the use of technology. In addition to the increase in brain size, a disproportionate expansion of frontal and parietal regions of the cerebral cortex of the brain has also been a prominent feature of brain evolution. This is an image of the modern human brain. This region highlighted here is called the frontal cortex and it is associated with reasoning, attention, planning and motivation. This region here is called the parietal region and it is one of the main regions of the cerebral cortex. The parietal lobes are located behind the frontal lobes and above the temporal lobes. These lobes are associated with spatial awareness. This region here is referred to as Broca's area and it is associated with speech and language comprehension. Now let us step back in time to examine our evolutionary history to investigate how our brains evolved. We begin with Australopithecus, a hominin genus who emerged around 4 million to 2.5 million years ago during the Pliocene in Africa. This group of human ancestors were short in height, standing at just one meter tall, and had an average brain volume of between 350 and 450 cubic centimeters which is comparable to the range of sizes seen in modern chimpanzees. Fossil evidence suggests that although Australopithecines retained brains, which are broadly ape-like in terms of size, they were able to walk upright, which is fundamentally different from living apes today. Homo habilis evolved from the broader Australopithecine group sometime around 2.1 to 1.5 million years ago during the early Pleistocene in Africa. This new hominid species was characterised by a much larger brain, with an average cranial capacity of approximately 600 to 700 cubic centimetres. They were also slightly taller at an average height of 1.3 metres. Homo habilis appears to have been able to manufacture early stone tools. It has also been hypothesised that this human species may also have had language capabilities. The evidence for this is in the expansion of the Broca's area in the skulls of some fossil specimens. However, this is not clearly evident in all specimens of Homo habilis, so this suggestion remains open to question. Homo erectus emerged around 1.8 million years ago, also during the early Pleistocene in Africa. The earliest representatives of Homo erectus to appear had brains which were not all that much larger than its predecessor, Homo habilis. However, Later forms of Homo erectus had a proportionately larger brain for its body size, with estimates of brain capacity between 900 and 1100 cubic centimetres. This significant increase in brain size is considered to be linked to an increase in height, as they were similar in height to modern humans. Homo erectus were also believed to have demonstrated social skills, as they had close social groups. Members of the species Homo neanderthalensis are the closest evolutionary relatives to our species today, Homo sapiens, or anatomically modern humans. Neanderthals first appeared sometime between 400,000 and 180,000 years ago during the Middle Pleistocene, spreading throughout Europe and western parts of Asia. These short and stocky hominins had relatively large skulls, housing brains which were around 1,500 cubic centimetres. This is actually largely similar to estimates for humans today, and in fact, in some cases, Neanderthal brain size estimates for individual fossil specimens have been shown to be in excess of the range seen in modern humans. Neanderthals were skilled weapon and tool makers, which came as a result of expansion of the cerebral cortex, which is associated with increased neurological sophistication. The Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago. We are not sure of the causes of their extinction. It may be due to climate change. Alternatively, 
their disappearance may have been the direct result of competition with Homo sapiens, who had begun to spread out of Africa and into Europe and Asia shortly before this time. Remarkably, there are still traces of Neanderthal DNA in the genomes of many modern humans today, indicating that when these two hominin groups encountered each other, they successfully interbred. Comparison of the Neanderthal genome to the genome of modern humans has shed further light on the evolution of the brain and suggested that a developmental feature called brain plasticity has apparently allowed modern humans to adapt both culturally and behaviorally to particular environments. And so, finally, we come to our own species, Homo sapiens. Brain size development in present day humans dates back to earliest representatives of Homo sapiens, who first appeared in Africa over 300,000 years ago. Brain shape, however, has evolved more gradually in the group, with a recognizably modern human shaped brain evident between about 100,000 and 35,000 years ago in the late Pleistocene. It has also been observed that the increased brain volumes which characterize anatomically modern humans is a result of a significant and rapid increase in white matter volume in the brain during early infancy. This increase in brain size is generally thought to correlate with enhanced cognitive capacity, which allows us to be creative. So, the next time you listen to your favourite piece of music, or pick up an instrument, you might remember the fascinating journey it took in our evolutionary history that afforded us the ability to do so.